Here's an interesting case study. Uh, this young man grew up in South Africa, so he played a lot of cricket. And uh, he lives in the States now and is uh, learning how to play golf. But uh, because of the defensive nature of the, the batter in cricket, uh, trying to keep the, the face of the bat facing the bowler uh, the entire time, uh, you know, trying to protect the wicket, uh, when you bring that into golf, it would uh, seem as if you would want to keep the club face facing the target the entire time. Uh, but the cricket bat is held vertically, and a golf club is held on an angle, so that the planes that you're using are very different. So uh, the the golf swing has to be instead of a vertical paddle wheel with the with the paddle facing the target the entire time, it has to become an inclined paddle wheel, and that's what we look at as the plane when you're looking from down the line. But I want you to see what this guy does. Firstly, uh, his hands, the, the palm of the right hand is facing the sky, the logo of the glove is facing the sky, and the hands are out of line with the club shaft. You can see the changes that we've made here, both hands more vertical, uh, more of a straight line between the shoulder of the left hand and then the club head. So uh, the, the entire left arm and golf club are more in a straight line. When he takes this club away, um, he looks as though he's following uh, advice that I've heard before about uh, the golf swing almost being like a hundred yard putt that you would never let the club face open or shut and it's uh, it's unfortunately it turns into something that looks as ridiculous as this does uh, the club face if it faces the ground like this it's just going back dead shut uh, this guy even keeps the club face facing the ground from above his head so it stays facing down for a very long time uh, the swing was very long uh, arms bent considerably. Uh, here at the top of the swing you can see the, even the back side, the cavity of the golf club, uh, which means that the club face is facing uh, just straight straight up into the air. As he comes down with his club face considerably shut, uh, he has to do everything in his power to keep the ball from going to the left of the target. So as he comes in, he has to try to hang on and keep this right hand uh, still facing the sky, the palm facing the sky as he goes through. That club face is already shut and it's not even touched the golf ball yet. So it's closed. He's supposed to hit this ball to the left, but what he does is he hangs on as long as he can to try to keep the club face from closing anymore. At some point he can't help it, but the club face is going to close. It's going to continue around, but uh, he can't keep his right palm facing the sky all the way above his head so at some point this right hand has to turn although he takes forever to do so right palm still facing this guy and then finally now it's starting to roll so uh, pretty unusual looking as far as golf goes uh, you'll never see a tour player look like that um, especially coming down into impact the club face can't be that shut as it approaches the golf ball and uh, now with this more vertical hand location and uh, his new startup, as he takes the club away, the club face opens more immediately from uh, from the golf ball. And then we can start seeing more of the club face instead of having the club face face the ground. Uh, the reason that he stops so short here, he stops up here close to his shoulder. I had asked him, uh, because this was only a 24-hour interval, uh, he took a lesson one day and came back the very next morning at the same time. Uh, I asked him when he went away to practice not to take any swings above his shoulder. Uh, so just short swings and slow swings so that he could understand what he was doing with his hands. And I think that's why he changed so radically. Um, when he comes down, he starts to close the club face to get into more of a comfortable position that he was in, uh, you know, from his previous swing where the club face was more facing the ball coming down. We'll see that more from down the line too. But you can see that he comes in with much better alignments. His hand, his right hand, much more vertical to the ground. Uh, club shaft leaning forward. Um, he sticks it in the ground just a little bit here, which uh, he's still in the process of steering also. So the palm is still trying to face out towards the target. At least it's facing the target, not facing the sky. So uh, there's been some change there, but I still want to see the club face uh, closing more as it goes through. However, the way that he brings it down, even though he took it back better, the club face is going to be a little more closed in the downstroke, and therefore it's going to still require some form of steering. I want to see him a little bit more open as he comes into impact and then allow the club face to shut. So let's uh, go back to the down the line view for a moment. I think we could all agree uh, based on the two golfers in these pictures that uh, most of us would choose the guy on the right to play on our team. 
uh, guy on the left, uh, his right palms facing the sky still. Uh, this was the original video. Bad posture, hands real low, uh, hanging down directly below his shoulders, which you always hear. Uh, this uh, this address alignment is much better. The club shaft is pointed much higher. Uh, his hands are more vertical on the golf club. Uh, posture is better. It doesn't look like he's got as much bend in the knees, and he's not as bent over as far as his torso is concerned because his hands are not so low. But uh, this is the pretty amazing part here. This is how much he changed his golf swing in 24 hours. When he takes the club back, it looks like a garage door going up. It just stays facing the ground. Uh, when he gets the club to parallel to the ground, the club face is still facing the golf ball. This was the change that he made the next day because of his new grip and his new startup. You'll see as he takes the club away, the club opens much more immediately. The The club shaft is pointed more down at the baseline of the plane instead of pointed outside the plane. You can see here, if I back this up, right to where the club is parallel to the ground, the club face is much more perpendicular to the ground instead of parallel to the ground in this picture and the club head is shadowing his hands on the right instead of the club head being pointed uh, way outside of his hands. Uh, I'm going to take this up to the top and show you that the club face uh, is probably the most closed I've ever seen. I mean that's about as closed as you can get a club face going back uh, and, and have it above your head. You can see here as he takes this one up above his head a considerable difference in the club face location. I'm going to take him up to his new top and I'll take this one up to end which was the complete backswing that he did here. Now I'm going to draw some plane lines for you. So when he comes down on the left side of the screen, uh, obviously I don't like the elbow location, the hand location, uh, nor, nor do I like the club face. Um, you can see that this club face as soon as it comes out, uh, oftentimes when you're looking at club face to hand, uh, you're looking for a line on the hand uh, to be the back of the wrist and the club face to match. Uh, these are almost perpendicular to each other. Uh, it's pretty amazing that it could be that shut compared to the back of the hand. So uh, I don't know that you could get it any more closed if you wanted to. But uh, he comes down uh, with his club face just dead shut. And you can see in the downstroke, he's very vertical with his plane, which is much more uh, similar to cricket. So uh, he's got the, the club coming down very vertical, almost like a, uh, almost like a Ferris wheel, and uh, has the club face facing the ground at ear level, which is pretty amazing. So he's over the top, 90-degree uh, shut club face. And his right hand has to come in just hanging on for everything he can do to keep this club face from closing. You can see the club face is still facing the sky here on the follow through. Exits below plane. He was so steep and over the top that he had to exit below. And now, in his downstroke, I want you to see he's certainly not as far over plane as he was. Uh, here's the, the same thing that he had in this other swing. It's obviously it's not as closed. But you can tell that it's still closed. Uh, it's still uh, not even close to perpendicular to the ground coming down, but um, it's it's uh, almost uh, almost perpendicular to the plane line. So it comes down a little over plane still, which you know we're curing that uh, next time he shows up. Ball takes off to the left. Now here's the thing that I want to change. Uh, and we worked on this later in the lesson, uh, you know, even when he was here on this on this side, on the right side of the screen. Uh, he came down uh, still with the tendency to get this club face the way that he had it uh, in the in the old swing. So let me take this one back. It's obviously not as shut, but it's certainly not as open as what I want it to be. So I want the club head to be much more on this plane line as his hands are delivering down this down this line. I want the club head on the line and I want the club face a little bit more perpendicular. So uh, this was just a 24 hour process so he's coming back and uh, I think he's coming back next week so uh, we're going to try to get something even better than this on tape but uh, I just thought that the uh, backstroke was pretty amazing. I don't know that I'd ever seen a club face that looked this closed going back but uh, to see him show back up 24 hours later and he uh, Looked like this. I was uh, I was pretty impressed.